Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I know you've heard of DeFi or decentralized finance, but do you really know what it is? In this video, we'll take a look at it and also discuss DeFi tokens and DeFi wallets. So if you want to hear more, keep watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions about the video. So we're going to take a look at some amazing articles on Coindesk today. So let's get straight to the point. DeFi is, as I said, short for decentralized finance, which is an umbrella term for a variety of financial applications in cryptocurrency or blockchain geared toward disrupting financial intermediaries. And these DeFi applications draw inspiration from blockchain, the technology behind the digital currency Bitcoin, which allows several entities to hold a copy of a history of transactions, meaning it isn't controlled by a single central source. And that is really important because centralized systems and human gatekeepers can limit the speed and sophistication of transactions while offering users less direct control over their money. Also, DeFi is distinct because it expands the use of blockchain from simple value transfer to more complex financial use cases. And we know that Bitcoin and many other digital native assets stand out from legacy digital payment methods such as those, let's say, run by Visa or PayPal, in that they remove all middlemen from transactions. So this cutting out middlemen from all kinds of transactions is one of the primary advantages of decentralized finance. And before it was commonly known as decentralized finance, this idea of DeFi was often called open finance. So most of these decentralized finance applications are built on top of Ethereum, which is the world's second largest cryptocurrency platform. And it sets itself apart from the Bitcoin platform in that it's easier to use to build other types of decentralized applications beyond simple transactions. And that is because of Ethereum's platform for smart contracts, which automatically execute transactions if certain conditions are met and it offers much more flexibility. So also, Ethereum is using some different programming languages, such as Solidity, that are specifically designed for creating and deploying such smart contracts. And with them at the core, dozens of DeFi applications are operating right now on Ethereum, and some of which are explored right here on this list that I'm going to talk about right now. Also, there is Ethereum 2.0, which is a common upgrade to Ethereum's underlying network, and it could give these apps a boost by chipping away at Ethereum scalability issues. So when it comes to these DeFi applications, there are different types of it. And the most popular ones include for the first thing, decentralized exchanges. And these are online exchanges that help users exchange currencies for other currencies, whether US dollars for Bitcoin or Ethereum for DAI, it doesn't matter. And these exchanges are a hot type of exchange, which connects users directly so they can trade cryptocurrencies with one another without trusting an intermediary with their money. There is a list on CoinMarketCap of the most popular uh, decentralized exchanges for you to use. And we do know that the most popular one is Uniswap right now. And of course, if you want to invest and if you want to trade, you should definitely check out this, this list right here. So the next one uh, here is Stablecoin. And Stablecoin is a cryptocurrency that's tied to an asset outside of cryptocurrency to stabilize the price. When it comes to stable coins, we do know that cryptocurrencies often experience sharper price fluctuations than fiat, which isn't a good quality for, for people who want to know how much their money will be worth a week from now. So stable coins peg cryptocurrencies to non-cryptocurrencies, such as, let's say, the US dollar, in order to keep the price under control. So as the name implies, stable coins aim to bring price stability. And there are some of the most popular stable coins right now. And we do know what happened with Terra Luna and USD last week. So we can say that they are always that stable. But however, we're going to cover up that in the next video where we're going to explain what actually happened with uh, Luna and USD last week. But let's get back to this subject right now. The next thing here. Uh, are lending platforms and these platforms use smart contracts to replace intermediaries such as banks that manage lending in the middle. When it comes to these platforms, 
These markets are one popular form of decentralized finance which connects borrowers to lenders of cryptocurrencies. And there is one very popular platform for it that is called Compound. Uh, as you can see it right here, this is their main website, so you should definitely check it out. And it allows users to borrow cryptocurrencies or offer their own loans. So users can make money off of interest for lending out their money. And Compound sets the interest rates algorithmically, so if there's higher demand to borrow a cryptocurrency, the interest rates will be pushed higher. Also, these DeFi lending is uh, control ba collateral based. That means in order to take out a loan, a user needs to put up collateral, which is often Ether. And that means users don't give out their identity or associated credit score to take out a loan, which is, as we do know, how normal non-DeFi loans operate. Also, we do have wrapped Bitcoins, which is a way of sending Bitcoin to the Ethereum network so the Bitcoin can be used directly on Ethereum's DeFi system. And these wrapped Bitcoins allow users to earn interest in on the Bitcoin they lend out via the decentralized lending platforms. And at the end, we have prediction markets. And these are markets for betting out the outcome of future events such as, let's say, elections and their goal uh, is to offer the same functionality but without intermediaries. Also, there are uh, some new DeFi concepts that have sprung up around these apps that are actually existing right now, and those are yield farming, liquidity mining, composability, and money uh, Legos. So I want to talk about uh, DeFi tokens next. And those are the tokens that represent a, a diverse set of cryptocurrencies native to automated decentralized platforms that operate using smart contracts. So these provide users access to a suite of financial applications and services built on the blockchain. And these decentralized finance tokens command a 114 billion market cap right now. That is actually a relatively small proportion, proportion of the overall 1.7 trillion uh, cryptocurrency market right now, but however, it has become one of the fastest growing sectors in the industry. And here are some of the most popular DeFi tokens. And again, there is Luna that is the largest DeFi token and it is the native currency of the Terra network. And it is the most popular one, but as I said, we, we know that what happened last week with it. so. Uh, we're not going to talk much about it. Also, we do have DAI, which is a USD pegged stablecoin, which is minted by Marker DAO, and it is the second largest DeFi token by market cap. And the next one, we do have Link, Chainlink's Link, uh, which is the native token of the decentralized Oracle network that feeds smart contracts with accurate real world data, such as weather reports or price information. Uh, so those are some of the most popular DeFi tokens and when you actually buy and invest in these tokens You need a wallet to stake it in. So what is actually a DeFi wallet? It is a non-custodial wallet that stores your cryptocurrency assets So they are non-custodial and that means only those with the seed phrase or private key can access your funds so governments cannot, for instance, freeze the account, although they might be able to order a token issuer to freeze assets sent to exchanges or render some assets obsolete. But however, non-custodial wallets diverge from wallets issued by centralized exchanges. So now when it comes to uh, centralized exchanges, there you sacrifice control over your assets. Just the same thing with a bank. But the major difference between a bank and a crypto exchange, however, is that deposits to the former are often regulated and insured by government deposit schemes. But, however, when it comes to centralized exchanges, it is uh, crypto exchanges, it is not the same. And there are different uh, types of non-custodial cryptocurrency wallets. There are actually two types of them. We have hardware wallets and software wallets. And when it comes to hardware wallets, they are created by companies and they look like USB sticks and you purchase them to hold your funds offline. And that is known as cold storage. And when it comes to software wallets, they are online wallets that you can access through your web browser or your phone and they are usually free. And some of the popular examples of these software wallets are MetaMask, Wallet Connect and Rainbow Wallet. 
So uh, when you want to choose the wallet uh, for your coins, uh, you have to keep some things in mind. So the first thing here is that the first choice that you have to make when you're deciding which of these DeFi wallets to use is actually the blockchain on which you plan to use it. So there are different uh, wallets for different blockchains. So for example, MetaMask uh, doesn't need really support Solana blockchain. So if you want to use the Solana blockchain, you should think about some other uh, DeFi wallets. Uh, also, uh, some DeFi wallets uh, doesn't visualize, let's say, NFTs that you hold in, in them. Uh, because they come with different features, so you might, up, uh, might end up using several DeFi wallets for different uh, purposes. Uh, also, some other wallets natively support hardware wallets, and some of them prioritize security, so there are definitely different things in mind uh, that you should keep in your mind when you want to choose the one uh, for you. So that would be it for today's video and I really hope you enjoyed watching and that you've learned something useful. And as I said, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below with your thoughts on the video. At the end, I just want to say that I'm not a financial advisor and any investments you make on your own liability. So thanks for watching and see you soon.